thanks to everybody to to be here. Thanks for uh, to Cofas to having invited me. I normally talk uh, to this uh, to this annual event of Europe, and normally it's the disconnection time with audience because nobody really cares what is happening in Europe. And I think this uh, year must be my year because uh, everything is happening in Europe and everybody's talking about Europe. So let's see why. And and of course it's 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 for the wrong reason, for the bad reasons. Uh, uh, here you have a series of graphs, you will have the presentation after, after the event, a series of graphs that shows to you where the problems are. Uh, basically, yes, this is a market reaction CDS and this is budget deficit. I just skim on, on, this, on, this, uh, on this graph because you have seen them everywhere, included South China Post, of course. And, uh, and so uh, this situation of budget deficit and CDS and GDP is very well known. And, uh, uh, and so I'm not going to uh, spend time uh, uh, commenting uh, on these figures, but you will have those graphs later. This is something that you can put on your Blackberries or in your calendars. This is redemptions. So if you want to see uh, when, when are the, the, the critical dates for Europe, uh, this is a schedule of repayments for Portugal, uh, Greece. Uh, of course, Greece, you have more, Spain. So these are all interesting dates to put in the calendar, but that does not, uh, I'm not going to, of course, comment on this. I'm going to comment on what happened uh, during the last two weeks and what is going to be uh, uh, our uh, view on, 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 on perspectives of things. I think that the most important piece of, uh, of, uh, of, of agreement we had from European institution came two weeks ago, uh, well, two weekends ago. It was, I would say, uh, largely expected, although markets played a little bit the days before with, uh, with, the, with the silence of uh, uh, Mr. Trichet during the ECB press conference on the fact that the ECB was going or was not going to buy uh, uh, sovereign bonds in distress. Uh, the, after two days, we had this confirmation that the European leaders met uh, uh, in, in the weekend. I don't remember where, but it must have been some very nice city, a nice, very nice European city, as we have many. Uh, and they agreed on on what is called or what is nicknamed European IMF, which is in fact a three uh, three stage or a three uh, item uh, uh, strategy. The first is this emergency lending procedure that is really the core of this European IMF, this 750 billion that Tom was uh, uh, was appropriately uh, recalling. Uh, it's basically a fund uh, uh, that is at the disposal of countries uh, in particular difficulties. Of course, this has to, de to be defined better. Modalities of payment have to be defined better, but the core, of, uh, the core is that European nations basically agreed on the fact that additional support is going to be needed or probably is going to be needed uh, by countries. Uh, and uh, instituted this fund of 750 billion, uh, 500 billion of which is going to come from basically European countries. Um, let me say that this is a little bit like a, 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 like a, the, the atomic bomb. Uh, when I was uh, at my graduate school, uh, we had the international law courses, and uh, it was very fun. And uh, one, uh, one course was on the, on the atomic bomb, and uh, the, the professor was saying that it was never used and it's not, never going to be used. And one student, I wish it was me, but it wasn't me, uh, said this uh, thing that always uh, uh, struck me was, no, in fact, it is used because it's, uh, it's used as a deterrent. So basically, it is used, the atomic bomb, but it's only used as, as, as a deterrent. And I think that the fund, the European IMF is exactly as such, it's, an, it's, it's a deterrent. It's not, some, it's, it's not money that is put aside, probably. Can, countries cannot afford it, as you will see in, a, in, a, in the following slide. But it's something that, it's like European institutions saying to the market, listen, we can disburse up to 750 billion with, the help, with also the help of IMF. So uh, try us. And, uh, and, and so it's a deterrent, it's a moral suasion trick. 
uh, that European institutions can do. They, co they come up with a pretty impressive figure, uh, but this figure is uh, still uh, on paper. It's probably going to be raised if needed, uh, but it stands there as, uh, uh, as, a, uh, as a guarantee that the things are not prob uh, probably not going to be uh, worse and that we will have money if some countries run into deep problems. The second item is the ECB, and this is real. I mean, this ECB has already started to buy on the secondary markets uh, sovereign bonds, which surprisingly uh, enough are not German or, or French bonds, uh, but they are mostly Spanish, Italian, uh, Irish bonds. I read yesterday a story, yesterday morning, a story uh, by which the ECB has already stopped Thursday, Friday, uh, to buy uh, to buy bonds, uh, I am sure that uh, Monday was another day in which they uh, they have uh, been forced to buy additional bonds. But this is, uh, of course, we will never know for sure how many bonds have been bought by the ECB. Uh, but definitely, the ECB is already in the market and is providing liquidity to some bonds, uh, to sovereign bonds who didn't have any uh, uh, before the intervention of the ECB. The third item is the reactivation of swap agreements. Uh, with Federal Reserve on, on US dollar, with some European banks starting to have problems in funding in US dollar. And of course, this has been uh, addressed by the reactivation of this, uh, um, this facility that was put in place at the age of the crisis in, uh, at the end of 2008. So what happened next? So basically, this is the uh, very fancy short-term one-day percentage drop in CDS uh, in, uh, in Europe. And you see that markets uh, have played a lot with this, with this stuff, and, uh, and, 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 and this is the result. Basically, after the, after the, uh, the announcement was made last Monday, uh, well, two Mondays ago, you had uh, almost a 50% drop in CDS everywhere, uh, which, is, uh, which is quite big. CDS market is, uh, is not extremely liquid, so the, the amount incurred is not it's too big, but this is a big drop uh, anyway maybe uh, some, some criticism of markets uh, would be uh, maybe too easy uh, looking, at this, uh, looking at this figure. There are two problems I see with this uh, European IMF, and I, I, I briefly mentioned them already. The first is that it's a very large commitment, especially for some country. I mean, ask Spain to give 60 billion uh, euro to put in this fund. Uh, with the current situation in Spain, it would be very, very difficult to commit to that sum and to, to, to actually disburse that sum today. And you, in this graph, you can see also the actual sum that all other countries should disburse. You see also Portugal should disburse 9, million, 9 billion euro. It's particularly difficult for Portugal uh, now and for other countries to disburse this. This is also why uh, it's a big moral suasion. It's a big uh, bluff, if you want it. Uh, uh, this uh, European IMF, but it seems to be effective and it's going to be effective. The second problem is a little bit more sophisticated and, and, and probably one of the, one of the things that intellectual uh, games uh, e uh, economists are always playing and probably not very, uh, not very uh, efficient in terms of uh, what is really going to happen, but uh, interesting to think about. Basically, Greece, Portugal, and Spain, let's focus on these three countries, it's a very different problem. So Greek is a liquidity, a typical liquidity problem with some cheating involved in public uh, finance figure. But then the economy, the economic model of Greece is not that much affected. It's a model based on uh, shipping, it's a model based on uh, uh, processed food exports and tourism. This is nothing, I mean, not very affected by the crisis. Take Spain. and. and we have the best Spanish economists here who can, who can say yes or no. But uh, Spain, it's the mo economic model that has been affected. Spain before the crisis had 19 almost 19% of GDP on construction, 20% of something on employment in construction. Uh, and uh, basically, this is, this is the failure of, uh, of an economic model. Uh, this construction, probably Spain have constructed for the next uh, 10, 15 years, uh, so this is an economy, this is, an, this is an, uh, a share of GDP that is not coming back. Uh, so there is a problem of long-term sustainability of uh, public finances due to a solvability uh, issue. So due to the fact that the economy might not be able, or might be, but uh, it, there is a risk that it might not be able to produce enough uh, economic activity to fund uh, 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 
stabilization of public finances. So these are two very different problems. And you know, in a situation like Spain, if indeed we, we take the, 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 the worst case scenario for Spain and the, the economy is not able to, uh, uh, to, to express an economic growth that is able to uh, rebalance uh, public finances, then a one-off uh, uh, one loan, such as the one that can, offer, can, uh, offer, can be offered by the European IMF, is basically useless. Uh, so it's a very different uh, issue here, and this might become a problem in the in the months.